Okay, so now we're at part two. You just recovered your guard from the side mount. Okay. So again, right, like he's coming up to knee cut, and you're still trying to just cross your feet like you're playing half guard. Once that knee lifts up to knee cut or whatever, I immediately go to reverse De La Hiva. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a link to a video that I did like talking about this. And it really helps with defending your guard, especially as they try to knee cut from half guard. But yeah, as that knee lifts is coming up, you got to be following with your hook around his hamstring. And again, if you can't do that, his knee touches down, keep distance with the shin, and then you pull your knee back through to get it in front of you and your opponent. Yeah, here you're trying to peel that foot. Yeah, yeah, you're able to get back. Okay, so now you got the close guard. But damn, he's able to go right under. How do you do that? Trying to pull him down. Oh, it's just like your feet weren't able to cross before he got his arms under. Same thing. Don't be grabbing his head, pushing his knees, push his knees. Yeah, don't underhook that leg. Yeah. Okay. You turtle. He's able to spin behind you. All right. With this turtle. Uh, you're here like this. I can't tell what he's doing with his left arm, but anytime there's an arm over your arm, so see how this arm is like uh, not going around your neck, but it's on the other side. You got you got to be understand that he can spin around to that side easily, and that's usually the side they spin around to. Assuming his left arm is at your like chin or neck. If both arms are around your body, he can spin to either side. But if he's around. When he has this arm around here, this arm needs to be monitoring the outside of his leg. Okay? It doesn't have to be there, like, right away. But you have to understand that if he spins there, your arm should, like, shoot out and trap his leg. It should shoot up behind you and then make a sweep like this. So that anywhere his leg is, it'll run into it. And that way he can't get behind you. Yeah, so right around, as he starts circling like that, this arm should shoot out and stop his leg from going. The other thing, he was able to circle around freely. When you're in the turtle position, you can't just be static. As your opponent starts to circle around you, like here, you should be with on your toes circling the other way. It's not a position where you just get to like sit and do nothing. Okay, so those two things should help. Uh, yeah, me personally, I just try to drop back to guard anytime I'm in turtle as soon as possible. I mean, there, there's some more to it than that, but here you do a really good job. I like how. When you roll, you keep everything tight. Your knees are in, in tight to your chest so he can't get his hooks in easily. And then you keep moving. You scoot to get your back to the mat. Like, that was all very well done. Let's go back to regular speed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know he's trying to attack your arm. But you want to like post your feet and turn into him. Yeah, one thing is is the way you're turning in. I can't tell. Maybe it's based on what's happening in the upper body. Like I can't get a good view of what's happening. But you kind of you kind of turn and go into bridge right away. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel the pressure that I would do is I would plant my feet here and keep scooting my hips like this way. So it's not that I'm trying to turn in place, but I'll be turning as I scoot my hips away. I think that kind of pressure from here would help you and force him to, to be constantly adjusting. But yeah, that was good. You got some space. I was able to flatten you back out, though. Yeah, it's hard to tell what's happening with the upper body. There you go, that was nice, that was very nice. Again, the, the only thing is, like everything you're doing is good for recovering your guard, but you gotta watch out for that arm position again. Like you're turning in so much that you're giving up that head and arm position. And because you're able to trap his legs, like you're okay with doing it. But again, if guys stop you from trapping that leg, you give up a lot of upper body arm position. Instead, as you turn in, try to keep that forearm framed against his neck. Don't let it slip 
Don't let your arm slip by his head like that. Boom, back and close guard, which is the place you want to be, it seems. Look over at the clock. I can do this hip bump. Boom. Uh, looks like you're trying to trap the arm, go for a triangle or something. That was decent. One thing, when people sit up like this and their hands are completely disconnected from you, you could... Uh, just try to sit up with them, but be because their hips are lifted, it's kind of hard to sit up into them. You just yank them in with your legs, because his hands are implanted on you. He has nothing to stop that. He'll just come crashing forward on you. Okay, yeah, now that his hips are lowering down, you can go for the hip bump sweep. I mean, you've probably seen this video before, but, like, yeah, like, that hand should be reaching over, or at the very least, if you want to set up a hip bump triangle, like, have it on the outside of his head. So you can help push his head and you already have your first grip. The other thing is, I'm a fan of delaying the legs opening as long as possible. Although, nah, you did pretty good there. There, hip bump. Yeah, if you already had this hand around his head, you can pull the leg out, shoot it up, grab a triangle. But, so you're trying to chase the hand for a triangle after. So he was just a little bit sharper at the defense than you were at the offense. And then he goes right back to double stack pass. Yeah, see see how you instantly get, like, crunched up? Yeah, so what you want to do with that, like I mentioned before, hands at his knees so he can't get his legs in. It's only when his legs are close he can, like, lift you up. And then the second thing is straighten out your spine. See how you're looking up at him? This is all curved right now. You need your head to be, like, like driving into the ceiling as if you're trying to look back behind you. Because, yeah, otherwise you get crunched up. I mean, he's passing right away. I can't tell what you're doing. Maybe you underhooked his leg. But yeah, you gotta stop doing that. Mm. It's a pretty good turtle. You kept going with the motion. Okay, this other thing. This is very subtle, but really important. When you turtle up, look at how you, tur you turtle up, and then you see how you lift your head up? When you lift your head up, it means that one of your hands needs to be basing on the ground, okay? If one of your hands is basing on the ground, it means it's not protecting your neck. And then, boom, that arm comes right in there. And now you're sitting up and you're leaving all this space open for the hooks. What you want to do instead, when you turtle like this, if you have to, like, chill out and turtle with someone's behind you, go forehead on the ground. That is your, your base point. It's your forehead on the ground. That way your hands are completely free to defend the choke and defend the hooks. All right? This is a very small thing, but really, really important. It makes your turtle so much harder to attack. The problem with beginners is they're always trying to lift their head up and expose you for chokes, and it also occupies your hands. Using for the choke, you get your back to the mat. It's very good defense. Trying to get out of mount. I can't really tell what your hands are doing. Looks like you're trying to get your feet in the middle, then you catch them in half guard or quarter guard. That was very good. You turn in. Nice. Let's get recovery to half guard. Yeah, see, you're still shooting right away to close guard. From here, it's fine, because he's on his knees. Uh, the only thing is, you got to be... Or, like, for example, when you decide to grab his head like this, like, if you don't for sure get that knee blocking out and you don't get the close guard, you're giving up upper body position. So, just, just a word of caution there. Uh, I'm curious as to why your legs open up. Yeah, I don't know why your legs open up. I assume you're trying to, like, climb your legs up high, but it's a little bit too loose. And then the stack happens again. You defend the one side well. This motion you did really good. This is also important for defending stack passes. When he tries to bring you to this side, you post with your foot. That was really nice. So that post with the foot allows you to get your hips back, like, down that way. Boom. They go back down towards the ground. That was nice. Try to pull him in. Another thing, if you're really worried about stack passes, is you'd have to play a different type of guard. You have to play butterfly or seated guard, but... 
it's just another way to kind of really stop stack passes from uh, from happening. Yeah, so you try to kind of like triangle. There, there is a, a nogi triangle. I have a teammate that does it. He's like ridiculously good at it. Well, not two, not a few teammates, but uh, that is an option. And from there, you can angle out. But yeah, I wouldn't go under the leg and angle out unless you you really work that triangle and know it in and out. Yeah, he's gonna pass through that. I'm not a real fan of like like holding your foot here or anything like that. I feel like your hand can do better things. You're just delaying the inevitable. Same thing here. When you turn in, like, you're not using... You're not trying to block the cross face enough, I feel. Or, or even, like, framing properly with your your far arm. So watch as you turn away. Look at what your arm here is doing. It kind of, like, turns in tight, and he gets a cross face. This arm should be either, like, framing against his neck or blocking the cross face outright. Right here, your hand's kind of just, like, stuck. Not doing much. That was good. It was a nice escape. You got frame now. Get that over his head. One thing that'll help you from there. Uh, yeah, get it framed over. Uh, I think it must have been the fact that he gets under this arm. Like, you need to keep that arm framed against his hip. Let's slow down even more. Because watch, this arm extends out to grab. Yeah, it's grabbing like his shoulder. And that's what allows him to, to turn your hips back down. If it stayed framing at his hip, like, boom, his hip would have been stopped there. He wouldn't have turned you this way. And then you would have been able to, like, to rock him over and, if not get on top, at least... Like, push me with this leg, try to get this leg back in and recover your guard. And then, after that, just time runs out. Alright, Razor Rob. Sorry, not Razor Rob. Razor Fraser. Hope that stuff helped.